This is JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Dean Perrine and welcome to JSA TV. We are coming at you on location at the W Hotel in beautiful Hoboken, New Jersey. And I am here with um, Mr. Todd Coleman. Todd is the president and CEO of eStructure. Todd, welcome to JSA TV. You've been here before, haven't I you? Have, I have. Good morning, Dean. Thanks for having me. You bet. You bet. So Todd, we're going to talk about AI in the data center and specifically um, AI as it um, meets the needs of enterprise customers and ultimately impacts the data centers that are um, providing those, those types of services. So Todd, why don't you talk to us about AI in your data center and what eStructure is doing to, uh, to meet the needs of enterprise AI customers. Yeah, so I mean, look, we've attracted a number of uh, AI labs and uh, some of the association members into our data center already and we continue to work with them to understand their needs. You know, I've, I've talked about this in the past, which is our understanding of certain types of applications that are coming into our data center and their unique needs that may not necessarily completely fit into a traditional tier three data center, mm -hmm. AI is no different. So when we talk about underlying applications like blockchain, which tends to drive a lot of the AI development, deep learning needs, uh, we, we find that they're requirements are different from a power, from a cooling perspective, from a level of redundancy. And so we continue to work with them to uh, understand what they're developing, why they're developing it, what their needs are. You know, we've found, uh, you know, we've worked with a couple of labs and, you know, for us, it's as much understanding that some of them are driving off of new applications. So for example, you know, we're working with a group uh, called Nothing Artificial, mm -hmm. and they, they've got a different bend on AI, and they really work from a neurosciences perspective, really from a bottom up, working with the human intelligence as opposed to the artificial Very intelligence. Cool. Yeah. And so we're working with them to understand what their needs are, but also trying to understand how we assimilate that into our data center and our day-to-day -day operations as well. Outstanding. So you you are you're talking about needs and about the specific your customer needs. And AI has the ability to help kind of ferret out um, issues and problems and resolve the problems that your customers might have. Why don't you talk to our view or our viewers a little bit about um, how AI in the data center um, helps kind of uh, determine what some of those issues are and how those can be resolved. So obviously, when you're running a mission mission critical environment, you know, time is of the essence, you know. We like to think that nothing ever goes wrong in a tier three data center, but that's why we put the level of redundancies in to give us more time to react. But when you're under that type of pressure, when something's going wrong, whether it's at the customer level or at the data center level, how you think through those processes, the timing, the steps that you undertake are important to keeping the data center operational, keeping the customer application and infrastructure up. Uh, and so look, we've, we've looked at certain applications, uh, really working with the manufacturers in terms of response times, checklists that the technicians would otherwise go through. Uh, you know, I mentioned earlier uh, something called NeuroTracker, which is driven off of uh, uh, the Nothing Artificial Lab. And, uh, you know, we've had discussions with Dr. Forbear, who runs the lab in, in the, at the University of Montreal. Mm -hmm. And currently, they're working with a number of sports teams and quarterbacks and decision makers where they see an environment in front of them and it's how quickly they react, especially under pressure, right? Yeah. When your adrenaline's yeah, yeah. pumping. And so we're trying to understand how do we assimilate that to the data center? So our technicians are going through the same processes that they would otherwise do with still using their human intelligence, but having to think about it and having to react quicker because time is of the essence. Sure, outstanding. Um, yeah, this is fascinating. I feel like we could probably talk all uh, morning and afternoon about this, um, but we would be remiss obviously if we didn't and talk about security in the data center, uh, security and AI and the safeguards uh, to protect uh, to protect networks and and um, you know those those types of assets. Why don't you talk to our viewers a little bit about um, you know um, how how eStructure and and AI are are. Um, are safeguarding your customers against uh, the increasingly sophisticated cyber attacks? Yeah, look, uh, I think almost everyone, the world is under attack every day. Data center is no different, right? Every day we're getting hit with something, whether it's a DDoS attack or some sort of email exchange where we're working with our customers, our partners, and our employees on how we react to that. So, right. you know, we have an individual within our company that pretty much 100% of his time is focused on network security, physical security in and around the data center. You know, we run our employees through training and even I get emails from our security team testing me on how I react to certain emails. Uh, so look, we're, we're looking for new ways to, to handle that. 
you know, five, six years ago as, a, as an infrastructure, mission critical infrastructure operator, we never really thought a whole lot about uh, the internet security of things. We think about physical security, yeah. and now it's evolved, where we need to be experts in the internet of, of security of things. And so we're looking for new applications. Uh, we're working with all of the, the various intelligence forums to understand what's the latest things coming under attack. We're not the experts, we rely on experts, mm -hmm. but we have to bring that into our data center every single day. I think AI can help with that because, the, again, once again, it's decision making. So if you see something inbound, whether it's an attack on the network, whether it's an email exchange, the ability to, to ci decipher through that and make a quick decision as to what you, how you handle that particular attack, uh, the, the quicker we respond, the, the more likely we're going to stay operational. Outstanding, and um, I love the fact that you you know you are talking about um, partnerships and and about using um, partnerships within the industry to make sure that your customers' needs are met from top to bottom. So um, it's it's a it's an interesting take because I think a lot of times we will talk to folks and they want to try to be all to all, and that's just not um, that's just not reasonable in in our uh, day and age, right? Um, but let's talk about our day and age as it relates to the future. Um, e structure. I know that you guys have got. A a lot going on. I know that you've kind of have your finger on the pulse of, of the future and things, but let's not talk about so much about um, what's going on today. What's going to go, what's happening with eStructure tomorrow? Let's talk about a year from now, maybe even five years from now. Yeah, well, I mean, look, you raise a good point on partnerships. Uh, look, we founded this company and I've started other companies where, you know, on the principle that we want to focus on our core competencies. We're not all things to everyone. We don't believe in the bright, shiny uh, object environment where we chase <laughs> the latest trend in hopes that that's, yes. that's our, uh, our boat, to, boat to salvation. Uh, and so partnerships are a big thing. Uh, obviously, we continue to be acquisitive. Uh, and that's, that's been uh, a priority of ours and we'll continue to do that. I think I've made comments before. I mean, we run our acquisition funnel like most people run a sales funnel. Uh, and so we're continuing to look for opportunities primarily in Canada. Uh, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, we're looking at new markets. You know, we've uh, we're, we've expanded into Vancouver recently. We don't expect to stop there. Uh, and so I would like to think that uh, we'll announce you know more new markets over the upcoming 12 months. Uh, and actually, that's the kind of stuff we like to hear yeah, right now. <laughs> you know, uh, no particular names, and and uh, you know, but uh, we're looking at opportunities constantly. You know, the market's going to evolve, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we'd like to think that there's going to continue to be consolidation in the marketplace. Uh, we're we're seeing trends where you know the U.S. telcos are getting out of the data center business. They got out of it in early 2000. They got back into it uh, in the the mid you know 2013, 2014 range, mm -hmm. and the, they're starting to exit those because they're realizing the capital intensity is is more than what they want to put towards it yeah. compared to their more traditional telecom business. And so I think those are going to create opportunities, uh, new marketplaces, uh, as you know, as data becomes more localized, new markets are going to evolve, and so it won't be limited to what we consider to be tier one, tier two markets, which has primarily driven the data center growth over the last 10 or 15 years, but we'll get into tier three, three and tier four markets as we push data closer and closer to the eyeballs and closer and closer to the edge of the internet. So, yeah. you know, our expectations is eStructure is going to be part of that consolidation strategy. Outstanding. Todd, it's, it's always a pleasure having you on JSA TV. We thank you for being here today. Thanks, Dean. Thanks you, for having me. You got it. You got it. And uh, good luck on your panel later today. Thank you. You got it. You got it. And thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. We'll see you soon.